All right, let's get started. Welcome to this week's webinar for Saturday, May, what is it, 22nd? I don't even know what the date is. May 21st. Three strategies for profiting in the stock market. This uh, is a presentation that I've done before. I've changed it a little bit from the last time I did it. And we're going to basically go through uh, three different strategies, a position trading strategy, a swing trading strategy, and a day trading strategy. And what I really want to do is introduce you to the process and the, the time that it takes to do each of these. Um, in the past few webinars we've been doing, it has been mostly theory. And today we're actually going to apply some of that theory and show the process for putting all of that theory into action. So the itinerary for today you can see on screen. I'm going to begin by just reviewing some of the chart reading concepts that we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Inflection points, trends, rising bottoms, and abnormal activity. Because those things are going to feed into our strategy discussion. So the first strategy that I will look at today is the stock scores simple weekly strategy. This is a position trading strategy. One that takes about 15 minutes a week. And uh, for the longer term position trader, it's something to do on Saturday, 15, 20 minutes. And you can you know, manage your portfolio, maybe making 10 trades a year. It's not something where you're going to be actively day trading. It's a little bit more passive. But for your retirement portfolio, it's a great uh, approach. Then I'll look at the stock score simple swing, which you can do every day, all day if you want. But quite truthfully, you can find the vast majority of opportunities in the first hour of the trading day. That's when most of them show themselves. So for someone that can check the market, uh, in the first hour of trading. So in my time zone, that's 6.30 till 7.30 in the morning. If you're in the east, of course, it's uh, 9.30 till 10.30. Maybe you're in Asia or something. We have people all over the world watching these webinars. So it's, it's always the first hour of the trading day on the New York Stock Exchange time zone. Um, strategy number three is an intraday pullback day trading strategy. I'll show you that. That one's one you can do all day. But again, most of the trades come in the first hour, hour and a half. And I'll show you a couple of examples from Friday's trading. I'll talk then a little bit about the trader training, the upcoming live class that begins June 4th, which is two weeks from now. And then finally, I'll talk a little bit about where I think the market is going. We'll do some market analysis and give you a sense of, you know, where is the Canadian stock market, the U.S. stock market, gold, oil, Anything else that I feel is appropriate to take a look at. We'll look at a few charts at the end of the presentation. All right, so let's review a little bit of theory quickly. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. If you want a more elaborate discussion of this, go to the Stock Scores YouTube channel. That's at youtube.com slash stockscores.com where the word dot is spelled out. Or you can just do a search for Stock Scores on YouTube. And a couple weeks ago, I did a video that really went into inflection points and the six elements of chart patterns. And that's something um, to take a look at if you haven't seen it already. All right, so what are inflection points? They are the building blocks of chart analysis. They really, to simplify, are the peaks and valleys on the chart. It's the point where stock price changes direction. So if you have a stock going down and it stops going down and starts going up, you've made a little valley right here. That's an inflection point. And if the stock is going up and stops going up and starts going down, then you have an inflection point there. So that's inflection points, a very important concept when we are looking at charts. So uh, here is a weekly chart of a Canadian listed stock, Claude Resources. This is actually a stock that I featured in my weekly newsletter back here in January 2015 as a stock that was worth considering as a buy um, because it met the criteria and I'll elaborate on that in a moment. But at this point, what I want to highlight is just the inflection points. So where do you see the peaks and valleys on this chart? They're actually pretty easy to see. You know, just look for little tops. So there's a few tops on this chart. And then look at the bottoms, the points where price stopped going down, started going up. Those are the inflection point lows. And once you have found those, you essentially have the building blocks for identifying chart patterns. Now, why do you want to identify chart patterns? Because chart patterns are very predictive. Um, you know, I've been trading for a long time and almost all of my strategies revolve around chart patterns and abnormal activity. And I'll show you in a moment what I mean by abnormal activity. But, you know, the reason I 
pick this stock right here is because it was breaking from a predictive chart pattern with abnormal activity. Abnormal activity by itself, not really all that useful. Chart patterns by themselves, pretty useful, but they can be made a lot more useful with this concept of abnormal activity. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So what are the elements of chart patterns? Well, again, two weeks ago, I did a webinar on chart patterns, and we talked about six elements. Today, we're going to focus on trends, rising bottoms, and abnormal activity. So going back to the CRJ chart, we have a trend here. That's an upward trend, obviously. Here we had a slightly downward trending market, then it started to move into an upward trending market there. We had rising bottoms where this low was lower than this low. That is a sign of optimism. And again, I'm reviewing topics from recent weeks, so I'm not going to go into all the detail of that. But essentially, anytime you have rising bottoms on a chart, you have optimism. Anytime you have falling tops on a chart, you have pessimism. You want to avoid pessimism or maybe short sell pessimism. You want to focus on optimism because that is the time when there's opportunity to make money in the market. Now, the final thing that I want to highlight is abnormal activity. Anytime you have abnormal volume, and it's all relative to what the stock did in the past. So these two weeks right here, the volume, even though it's hard to tell, the volume was higher than most other weeks prior. And then we had a real abnormal week here in terms of volume. We had some abnormal activity for volume there and there, and obviously here, huge abnormal volume. We can also look for abnormal activity in terms of price behavior. So here we had abnormal price behavior here, here, here. Anywhere that you see a price change that really stands out on the chart, that is abnormal price behavior. And when you combine abnormal price, abnormal volume, and a predictive chart pattern, you get good opportunity. So to put it all together, with this particular um, focus that I'm looking at, which is a weekly chart, we want to look for weekly breaks from predictive chart patterns. And we're going to go through this strategy in just a moment in a little more detail. But what I like to do is use the stock scores market scan tool to scan for abnormal activity. And I'll show you that in a moment. Then when we've looked at the stocks that are behaving abnormally, we check them for a predictive chart pattern. And we use the rules defined in the stock score simple weekly strategy in the stock scores education center. Again, I'll show you that in just a moment to identify the good trading opportunity. So as I said, back in January of 2015, well, I'll show you this in a moment, actually. Um, I featured this stock, Claude Resources, because it met all of my criteria. It was behaving abnormally, abnormal price, abnormal volume. It was breaking from a predictive chart pattern, something called an ascending triangle. And it um, ultimately went on to huge performance. The stock went from 40 cents to $2.40. That's almost a 600% gain in a year and a half. Obviously, uh, we'd love to have those stocks. And these things show themselves on a regular basis. They tend to come in chunks and streaks. So at this particular time, we had a lot of gold stocks doing that. Other times, you'll have some energy stocks. You know, energy stocks had a good... Um, run over the last few months, but it all started a few months ago with this similar concept of abnormal activity from a predictive chart pattern. So now let's jump to the position trading scan. Actually, before I do that, I'll just show you where you can look at the old um, newsletters. If you go into the products area on stock scores, go to newsletters. I'm just going to read past weekend newsletters and jump to uh, January 2000. I don't remember the exact week, but we'll just go to 2015. Uh, there it is. So January 19th, 2015, I can click on that one. And this is how the chart looked back then. So there's CRJ back then. And I write T.CRJ uh, is a gold miner and this sector has been doing very well over the past few weeks. While gold is at a critical point in its turnaround, and I cite the Market Minutes video that I do each week, the chart of CRJ appears to have decent upside until it encounters resistance at 70 cents, support at 30 cents. So there was the pattern as it looked back then. How did I find it? That's the process I'm going to show you right now. So on the stock scores market scan tool, we have different preset scans. So if you are my student, you get access to these scans. Um, if you aren't a student, then you don't have the settings for the scans. They are um, only given to my students. So there is a strategy in there called stock scores simple weekly. Now, the first thing we want to do is set our default chart to a three-year weekly chart. 
And then we're going to run the scan, something you would do once a week, typically on the weekend, but you could do it any time during the week. And then evaluate the charts for the right kind of pattern. So let's do that together. Jump back to the stock scores uh, website. I've already signed in. I go to the market scan tool. I'm going to select the preset scan called stock score simple weekly. I've got two choices, Canada and the US. I think we'll run Canada for fun this week. I'm going to run the scan. And it found for me 60 stocks that meet the basic criteria of the scan. But I realize now I just forgot something. I didn't set my default chart to a three-year weekly chart. So let me show you how you do that. First of all, just go into the get the stock scores box in the upper right here. Just type in any symbol. Let's type in Microsoft. And it will bring up um, my chart. Now what I need to do then is go to the chart tab, click on it, and change this to interval. I'm going to select weekly, and I'm going to make this eight, no, sorry, three years. All right, so I have the interval weekly for three years. Click on create chart. And you will see that now Microsoft's chart is a three-year weekly chart. And if I type in any other symbol, so if I type in Suncor, for example, um, it is also now a three-year weekly chart because I've set my default chart to that time frame. Now let's go back to the market scan tool. Select the Stock Score Simple Weekly Canada, run the scan, select all, and view these charts in the gallery viewer. Now the gallery viewer allows me to look at um, 10 charts per page. You can see there's a whole bunch of little mini charts here. And if I want to look at that chart in more detail, I can click on it and it blows it up so I can see a little more detail of that chart. Um, I can click on it again and it shrinks it down. And I can cycle through these looking for stocks behaving abnormally from a predictive chart pattern. So this one right here is interesting. It traded pretty good volume this week, not huge volume. You can see these uh, stock scores are above 60 on the sentiment stock score, which is important. Um, it is a decent looking chart. I would say the stock has a 65% chance of going higher. Some of the weaknesses, it's got quite a bit of resistance in around uh, 50, 60 cents. So that's going to slow it down once it gets up to that price level. It's going to see some selling pressure. The other weakness I see is that it doesn't look like it closed near its high of the week. I can make this a six month chart. And yeah, it just doesn't really show that extreme excitement. It kind of had some excitement on Wednesday, fizzled out a little bit before the end of the week. So not bad. I would, again, I would rate that one a 6 out of 10. As I go through these charts, I'm looking for a very specific set of things. And those things are taught in the strategy rules for this particular strategy. So, for example, this stock provided all of the entry reasons, all it met all of the rules back here about uh, three months ago. That was at 50 cents. Now it's at $1.20. I wouldn't buy it here today, but certainly if I owned it, I would hold it because there's no sell signal yet either. All right, so we just cycle through charts looking for breaks from predictive patterns. Uh, this one, the Masca, had uh, the predictive chart pattern back in last summer. It had it again, looks like uh, February, end of February. So those are the things that if you do this scan weekly, you will find these things as they happen. So let's go through all of these. We have 60 to go through. I'm going to go through them pretty quickly just to save time in the webinar. And when I see something that I like, I'll pause and I'll, I'll highlight it. So, so far, LYD is about the only one that I think is decent and it's not even great. It's, a, as I said, a 6 out of 10, maybe it's almost a 7, 6.5, let's call it that. Um, and just cycling through these pretty quickly. Now, you can see with this tool, you can go through a lot of stocks fast. It takes some practice. You know, I'm going through these quickly because I've done this a lot. Um, but if you've not done it a lot, if you're new, instead of taking maybe five minutes, it might take you 15 or 20 minutes uh, because you're going to go through the charts a lot more slowly. But with practice, um, you, you will get it. Here is a chart that I think looks pretty good. This is CAE. And you can see that it's had resistance. It's been bumping up against $15.5, $16 for two years actually. I haven't been above that price for two years. But notice this week it traded big volume and it's actually 
closed at a higher close than it's closed in any time on this chart, a three-year chart. So that shows us that the market is excited about something. It actually made its break last week. It kind of made a little bit more of a break this week. So um, looking quickly at the six-month chart, wouldn't surprise me if this stock pulled back to 15 and a half before it started to go up, but I think this stock has got a real good potential to move higher in the months ahead. Maybe not in the days ahead or maybe even not in the next couple of weeks, but in the months ahead, uh, and that's what the focus of this strategy is, longer term trades, I think it's got great potential. It pays a yield, historical yield is 1.84%, uh, so you collect a little bit of revenue on the dividend. Um, that's a good example of what I'm looking at. I'd rate that one a 7 out of 10. Let's see if we have anything else here. Um, Incidentally, this stock, Borolex, has a very similar pattern um, a few months ago to what CAE has now. There you see that long sideways trading pattern and then the break to new highs that happened on this stock back in December, January. Uh, and it's been moving higher ever since. But um, CAE is kind of at that point now. Again, 65 70% chance of going higher in the months ahead. Here's another one, Mag Silver, very similar pattern to CAE today. This stock did it uh, back in February. There you see that long sideways trading pattern. Then it started to break through, took a couple weeks to get its momentum going, and now it's been you know, really moving. Uh, it's up uh, about 80% uh, since that breakout a few months ago. All right, uh, I've got a few more to go through, and I will stop if I see anything I like, and then we'll move on to the next strategy. So continuing along, don't see anything I really like yet. Um, so we, we found two out of 60. That's pretty normal. You know, you look at 50 stocks, you should expect to get two, maybe three that look pretty good. How long does it take to go through 50, 60 stocks? Probably five minutes once you've practiced a little bit. Uh, some reason my internet connection suddenly got slow. I did this scan um, here. There they come. So there's the charts, and SNC Lavalin is a stock that I featured in my newsletter a few weeks ago. I think three weeks ago on this breakout at 49. Now it's at 52. So you know, for a conservative stock, up seven or eight percent plus, it pays a two percent yield. That's the kind of thing we're looking at. Uh, Cineplex looks pretty good here. Um, sideways trading for the last year and a bit, almost year and a half. Breaking to new highs this week. The only weakness here is it doesn't have the abnormal volume I like to see. You know, all of these things are rules. If I look at the six month chart. Yeah, I don't really see the excitement in terms of volume. So pretty good chart, not a great chart. It's got a 3% yield. Um, I'd give it a six out of 10. The lack of volume is the main concern I have. All right, so that's the process for doing the stock scores simple weekly. Now, how do you know what to look for? If we go into the education area of stock scores and go to the investor modules, there is a module here called stock scores simple weekly. And if I click on the lesson, I can read about the rules and I can also watch a video. Um, again, Clicking on this, going into Stock Score Simple Weekly, and this will play a video where, you know, I basically teach you for 13 minutes how this particular strategy works. And it's, uh, you can access it from your cell phone if you've got good internet access on your phone, from an iPad, from a computer, it doesn't matter, it's all pretty accessible. And it's, you know, a 13 minute review of what the rules of that lesson are, all right? So let's jump back over to uh, the market scan again. We'll just go back to the presentation. All right, so that was our first strategy, which was a position trading strategy called the Sox Core Simple Weekly. And we utilized the market scan with that particular scan. We have a Canadian version and a U.S. version. Uh, for this particular strategy, I like to use a three-year weekly chart. But then if I like that chart, I will also then check the six-month daily chart just to look for some time frame confirmation. We talked about uh, time frame confirmation um, a couple weeks ago in one of those webinars. And then you evaluate the charts for the good signals. Now what we're going to do is look at a swing trading strategy called Stock Scores Simple Swing. 
Now you can use this uh, using two different tools. One is the stock scores market scan, which is what I'm going to use today. You can also use it with TradeStation and some indicators that I have created for TradeStation. Uh, a couple weeks ago when I was doing one of my webinars, you may remember that I had some, some charts on the screen that had little pink dots on it and, and white dots. So those pink dots and white dots represent abnormal activity in something called an action candle. Those are things I have programmed into TradeStation and that concept is also programmed into stock scores. So if you're going to use stock scores, which is what we will do today, you need to set your default chart to a 30 minute, 15 day chart and you're going to run this process in the first hour, maybe two hours. You probably get 80%, probably get 80% of the um, uh, picks in the first hour maybe hour and a half. The other 20% come throughout the day, but I find that I don't need to sit all day every day if I don't want to because I don't miss out on a lot. You know, if you've got the time, great, but I like this strategy because I can trade that first hour, take my positions, and then kind of monitor my holdings from my cell phone and go out and do things that I need to do. So it's a nice strategy if you don't want to sit in front of your screen all day, but certainly you can if you want to. All right, so we're going to um, go back to the stock scores tool. Remember, the first thing I have to do is set my default chart time frame to a 30-minute chart. Um, so I'm going to punch up the symbol, and we are going to go to the chart tab. And just like we did before, when we change this to a weekly three-year chart, now we're going to change it to an intraday 15-day chart. And I'm going to make it a 30-minute candle. So you can see there it says intraday, 30-minute candles, going back 15 days. Click on Create Chart. And now you see a 15-day, 30-minute chart for Microsoft. You can see right up at the top there, that's what it says. All right, now we go to the Market Scan tool. And we are going to select the scan called Stock Scores Simple Swing. Run the report and it found lots. Um, the market was up on on Friday, so it produced quite a few picks. The other thing is that we're doing this after the market closed. When you do this, you know, 35, 40 minutes into the trading day, which is when I recommend you do your first scan, um, the list will be shorter because stocks won't have had time to make the kind of gains that get picked up by the uh, filters in the stock scores market scan. So we're going to do the same process that we did with the last strategy. We're going to look at these charts for predictive chart patterns, for the things that I describe in the lesson, which is in the Stock Scores Education Center. Now the difference here is that we're looking at a shorter term chart. This chart that you see on screen goes back only 15 days. Each one of these candles represents uh, 30 minutes of trading. So you can see that this stock, Globus Maritime Limited, uh, started to trade abnormally at the open on Thursday and it continued that strength on Friday. Doing this process Thursday morning, you could have picked the stock up at 40 cents. Friday's close is 60 cents, so it was up 50 percent. It actually hit 80 cents in the first hour of the day on Friday. So here's a situation where the market scan helped you find a stock that ultimately doubled in one day. And that's really the power of this tool. It allows you to go through a whole lot of stocks very quickly, looking for stocks that are coming alive, which is what this strategy is all about. This strategy looks for stocks that nobody cared about yesterday, and then they come alive today with abnormal activity. So here's an example, CYTR, nobody cared about it on Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, but Friday morning it started to move. And if you do this scan in that first hour, you find these things, and if you know what to look for in the chart pattern, you can pick them up. This one, roughly $2.45 entry price on Friday, closed at, let's call it 260 So it's made a decent little gain, but to me it's just getting started, something that will probably continue to do well next week. All right, so that's the process. It takes uh, not a lot of time. You just kind of cycle through the charts looking for stocks that are coming alive. Here was the big mover on Friday, this was actually a great day trader, which I'll talk about in a moment because it's uh, my example for a day trade from Friday. But it was also a good swing trade because in the first 30 minutes, it came alive. You can see 
the real extreme abnormal volume, abnormal price action. Nobody cared about it. It was at a dollar on Thursday. Friday morning came alive, pick it up early in the day. I'll show you how I do that with my day trading strategy in just a moment. Close the day at 350 uh, or, or close to it on Friday. So up, you know, over 300% in a single day. And every day there's stocks that make these abnormal moves. That's a very abnormal one. They don't always do that. But um, the tool is how you find it. Without the tool, you can have an understanding of the strategy and the concept, but you need a process and you need a tool to help you find it. And that's what uh, this, this, thing, this thing is all about. So we're just looking for certain patterns. This one, again, pretty good. All of the semiconductors on Friday did very well, led by Applied Materials. And they kind of dragged up all the semiconductor stocks higher on Friday. Uh, here you can see one up 14% in the single day. How do you find it? With this tool and with the uh, rules of that strategy. All right, so let's keep moving along fairly quickly. I want to spend all day doing the webinar. I know it's a long weekend. You probably have other things you'd like to do as well. So let's take a look now at a day trading strategy. The stock scores intraday pullbacks is one of, I don't know how many day trading strategies I have, maybe three or four day trading strategies that I do. It utilizes TradeStation or a real-time charting program. I have programmed some indicators into TradeStation, which make it a lot easier to find these things quickly. You can use other platforms. TradeStation has a cost. It's about $300 a month. And so, you know, if you're a professional trader or even if you um, plan to trade a few days a week, that cost is easily justifiable because you're running a business. It's like if you open a, you know, a store, you, you pay rent for where your store is going to be located. Well, this is kind of your rent. $300 a month is not a lot to pay for rent where you're buying and selling inventory stocks all day long. So um, I love TradeStation. I've been using it for probably 15 years. I have nothing to do with TradeStation. They don't pay me to promote it. I just suggest people use it. And I have um, negotiated a little better price for my uh, students to use TradeStation because normally it would be more than this. If you're in the US, you can actually open a brokerage account with TradeStation and get TradeStation for free because in the US they are a broker. I live in Canada. Canadians cannot have a brokerage account with a US broker and so I have to pay to subscribe to the tool TradeStation and like I said it's about $300 a month depending on where the US dollar is. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a two day or pardon me a two minute three day chart to do our analysis. We're going to run a little process which I'm going to show you in TradeStation next and again we evaluate charts for entry signals. Now I'm not going to teach the rules of my strategy today Obviously, that is um, what my education is all about, the, the um, Stock Scores Trader Training in the Stock Scores Education cent Center is, um, is where you learn the rules to this. But I'm going to show you the process just to show you how quick and easy it is. I have a scan called Gainers. I run that scan and I grab all of the symbols and copy them and paste them to what's called a radar screen. This radar screen uses an indicator that I developed called my volume test, which tests for abnormal volume. And right now it's calculating the abnormal volume for all of these stocks. Now, there's a couple of criteria. First of all, I want the stocks to be abnormal, but they also have to be quite liquid. So I'm going to eliminate anything that's not abnormal. And there's a value to this indicator which determines whether it's abnormal. I'm going to delete all those. I'm also going to delete the stocks that aren't liquid enough to meet the criteria of this strategy, and it's about half of them. I like stocks to trade at least 15,000 times a day. And now I have my watch list. Now that took me less than a minute to build. This is my watch list of stocks that I'm going to monitor for entry signals through the day. So I copy that list and I drop it into this radar screen, which is on a different time interval and calculates another indicator of mine, something called a price test indicator or message candle indicator. And this particular indicator is how I identify my entry signals. I've also got an indicator in here, again, my own proprietary indicator that I have created for TradeStation. The only way to get that indicator is to um, be one of my students. I don't give it out. You have to, you know, take one of my courses, my active trader course, to have access to this indicator. Now you can see on the chart, let me just show it a, a chart that isn't so out of scale because the stock had a big gap. So this particular chart 
is a two minute chart uh, going back a few days. I'm only showing uh, the current day just so that the resolution isn't too bad. I'm just going to blow this chart up here. A couple things I want you to notice. First of all, the volume traded on this stock is very abnormal. This particular chart is a two minute chart. That means this is the open of trading on Friday and that represents two minutes and then two minutes later and so on and so forth. So you can see the time along the bottom axis. Okay, so that's uh, May 20th from 9.30 in the morning Eastern time until four o'clock. This is what that stock did. It opened the day at uh, $1.13, closed the day at $3.41. Obviously a huge gain for the day. But you should also notice that there's some little dots and some little plus signs on this chart. Those are all there to help me identify my entry signals. There's some white dots on this chart. The white ones are a little bit hard to see because they're very small. Um, but one of the critical ones is this blue dot. The blue dot is something called my wave indicator and it looks for a stock that is basically giving me my entry signal. Now on this particular stock we had our entry signal at this blue dot when it broke the pullback. All right, so using TradeStation I can monitor my watch list of stocks for those that give me the entry signal at the right time. Now then we do a little risk management calculation. Hopefully you can see, I know that the, the text is quite small, but the entry point on this trade was $1.90 and it had support at $1.75. That means if you bought 1,000 shares of this trade, you were, um, 1,000 shares you were buying at, 1,000 shares at $1.90, so that was $1,900 trade. The risk on the trade was 15 cents a share. So $150 of risk, and the stock ultimately uh, went up at the close. It, it closed right here at this line, which is 10 times risk. That means if you risked $150, you made 10 times that. So you made $1,500 on this setup. Okay, now it actually went higher than that, but let's just assume we hold until the close. We actually have some rules that tell us when to sell. Um, but if we held until the close, a $1,900 investment or trade value made you $1,500. So obviously that's a very nice one day profit on a day trade. Now the process to find it is step one, run my scan. Step two, build your watch list. Step three, monitor the watch list for signals. When that stock made the little blue dot here, it would also print a little uh, alert in this column over here. So all I basically do when I'm doing this strategy is monitor my watch list for the stocks that are giving me entry signals. So let's look at another one. There's a blue dot on this one as well. You can see it was trading abnormal volume, our little blue dot there. This one didn't do as well as CLRB, but still did pretty good. So we draw our risk reward lines like that. This one earned three times risk by the close. So if you risked $1,000, you made $3,000. If you risked $100, you made approximately $300 by the close. Of course, you got commissions. You're looking at maybe $10 or $20 in commissions. You get the idea. Day trading is about focusing in on the stocks that are trading hot, that are trading on a story. Um, all of these dots and indicators and things like that are things that are available to my students. And, um, you know, basically once you're my active trader student, there's a little file you download, you import it into TradeStation. Now, my indicators only work on TradeStation. You can do similar things in other platforms with a little bit of help from me. But for the most part, I only support TradeStation because that's where I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars in, in um, programming time to develop these indicators. And, you know, like I said, I've been working with TradeStation for probably 15 years to um, build these indicators and build the processes and that sort of thing. So that is our third strategy for today. It is a day trading strategy called intraday pullbacks and it's one that I teach in the Active Trader course. So how do you learn this stuff? Well, I created last year an online education center. For the previous, I don't know, 12, 14 years, I was teaching people in a classroom a couple times a year. So I would um, you know, teach at the University of Calgary, for example, uh, students would come sit in a classroom all day and I would teach this stuff but it's kind of an inefficient way to teach because number one I'm only teaching it to you once when you leave you have to remember and you know look at your notes and, and remember what I taught number two you kind of have to be close to one of the places where I'm teaching and I tended to only teach in Canada uh, typically in Calgary Vancouver and Toronto 
did a few courses in Montreal and Ottawa as well. Um, so it wasn't very efficient for people outside of those areas. So what I decided to do is put all of that education online. The benefit is you can watch the videos as often as you like, and you can do it from anywhere in the world. I have students in Thailand, Hong Kong, uh, Europe, all over, all over the world. Uh, and, and it's cool for me as a, as someone, you know, doing this stuff to be able to have students from all over the world learning these methods. So how does the education center work? Well, it's easier for me to show you, and I already showed you this, but you go into the education center and provided you have access, you can access any of these areas. So a free area is called the getting started. There's a whole bunch of videos in there on the basics of uh, chart reading. I encourage you to watch those videos. The foundation area is a paid area and in it you have uh, lessons on a variety of topics. There will be a written lesson, a video, an assignment, and a multiple choice test. And you work through the modules top to bottom to learn the theory. And then you have the actual strategies where there is a written lesson and a video. And the assignment is basically doing it. And I support you as you practice. We have a trading simulator where you can practice doing these things. And I am always available to you to give you some feedback on trades you make or trades you are considering to make sure you're following the rules properly. So that's the Stock Scores Education Center. And as I said, it works on any device that has internet access, as long as you have a fairly modern browser. If you've got a browser that's you know 10 years old, maybe it won't work. But anyone with a fairly modern a computer is going to be able to do this stuff. So that's the Stock Scores Education Center. As I said, each module in the foundation area has a written video assignment and test. In the uh, strategy areas, it's just written and video. Uh, the assignment is actually doing the trades. And again, I encourage people, and we talked about this, I think, last week. I encourage people to use the simulator. The simulator is at tradescores.com. Uh, trade scores, and it's free. So you can go practice trading for free on the simulator that I built a few years ago, tradescores.com. It's very realistic. It, you know, you make trades just like you would with your broker, but you're not risking any money. And so it's a good way to practice before risking capital. Um, when you take my course, you learn my rules, and I really encourage people to practice on trade scores, earn a good reward for risk in trade scores of at least 10, and then you're ready to start trading with a small amount of risk capital and we have a process that I teach for getting up to speed. So how do you become a stock scores investor? How do you learn this material? Well, basically you take the stock scores investor course. That's going to teach you that first strategy that we looked at today, as well as some others. Um, I've got a daily version of that. We've got a few other strategies that you learn in the investor course. It's all done online. You get access to the stock scores education center. When you purchase the course, which you do online, your access is instant. You buy it. 10 seconds later, you can use this stuff right away. It gives you access to our tools, our market scan tool. It also gives you support from me. So as you're working through the learning material, you can email me and I'll help you with any questions that you might have. All right. Now you can do the same thing if you want to be an active trader. There's a couple of things that you get with the active trader that you don't get with the investor course. And by the way, when you do the active trader course, you also get access to the investor course. But for someone that wants to be a more active trader, they want to day trade or swing trade or both, that's where you want to step up to the active trader course because it teaches you extra strategies. You also learn the day and swing strategies as well as the investor material. But equally important, you get my indicators for TradeStation. Now, I have spent, I don't even want to think about it, thousands and thousands of dollars programming these indicators. If you were to go out and do this on your own, well, I'll tell you, take you a few years to learn it yourself. It took me eight years. You're then going to spend a lot of time and money um, developing your own strategies. You're going to spend a heck, of, a heck of a lot of money programming indicators, unless you're a good programmer yourself. I'm not a great programmer, so I define the uh, math logic. I send that to some people that I, I have that work for me. Um, that program TradeStation, and they program it for me. But these guys are charging me you know, sometimes a couple hundred dollars an hour and an indicator can take easily 20 hours to build. So one indicator might take me, um, you know, 2000 to $4,000. You get all of that stuff when you take my course for far less than what it even cost me to make the indicator. It also gives you access to our tools on stock scores. Everyone gets access for six months with either course. And then after six months, you pay $300 a year 
to continue using the tools on stock scores. And again, you get support from me when you do my course. Now, a couple of times a year, and it's getting a little more and more infrequent, but I do some live training, much like I'm doing today, I do some live training to more than anything help you get over the procrastination. When you sign up for, and you says you're November, this should be June, sorry, it's June. Um, when you sign up for this training in June, uh, we're going to sit down just like we're doing today, and I'm going to take you through the foundation material together for three hours on a Saturday. I encourage you to go through all of the online material before Saturday. I encourage you to follow up and go through the material after Saturday. But the nice thing about that three-hour session is you get a real good overview from me of how everything connects and how it all works together. Then the following week, uh, we are going to practice the strategies. So in the evenings at 6 o'clock Pacific time, it takes about an hour each night, Monday to Thursday. I'm going to do the actual market scanning process like we did today, but with all of the rules understood. And we're going to go through and we're going to practice finding trades. And we'll do that four nights in a row. Each of those sessions is recorded as a video so that you can watch it later. For those who do the Active Trader course, you're also going to have me teach you how to trade, day trade and swing trade live in real market conditions. So for most of the days, we start right at the market open for two hours. Uh, so on Monday, we go market open for two hours. Tuesday, same thing. On Wednesday, we focus on a different strategy, something called the wave strategy. So on Wednesday, we actually start an hour after the market opens, and again, for two hours. <clears throat> and then on Thursday, we put all of the strategies together. We do everything that I try to do every day. Um, and that actually takes three hours. So we go from 6.30 till 9.30 Pacific time, 9.30 till 12.30 Eastern time. We do all of that on, on Monday to Thursday for the active trader students. So if you are an investor student, this is what you're going to get. If you're an active trader student, you get this. You also get access to the uh, investor stuff. So if you ever have any aspiration of doing active trading, this is a kind of a better deal because you get access to the investor material as well. But if you have no interest in position trading or anything like day trading or swing trading, then don't take the active trader course. It's a waste of money. All right, cost. Well, if you register for this uh, course before May 31st, you get the live training for free. After May 31st, it's $495. The foundation session is Saturday, June 4th for three hours. And then we have the uh, active and investor sessions as I described. The cost for the investor course, $2,495. The active trader course, $3,495. If you've taken the investor course in the past and you want to upgrade to the active trader course, you pay $1,250. If you've taken the foundation course in the past and you want to upgrade, you can do that as well. Just log into stock scores and go to the um, education area. It'll show you the upgrade fee. So if you've taken any of my courses in the past and you want to upgrade to one of the higher levels, then you can see right online, once you're logged in, what the upgrade fee is. Now, I'm going to be showing you some stock charts. I'm going to be answering some questions in a moment. But um, while I just catch my breath here, let's put up our poll. If anyone would like to receive an email next week um, with some information about the upcoming live course uh, and, and the active and investor courses in general, just answer this poll. Uh, if you've answered this poll in the past, you're already on my list, so you don't need to. Now, if you said no in the past and now you'd like me to send you some information, uh, certainly let me know and I'll add you to the list. This is just a, I'll send out an email next week with some more information on the course. Now, the, um, the deadline for the live training free, to get the live training free with the purchase of the course is May 31st. And, and I know every year when I do this, people wait until May 31st to buy the course. I'm not really sure why, but whatever, that's the way it is. Uh, you're better off to do it sooner because the more you can go through the online material before the course on Saturday, June 4th, the more you're going to get out of it. So um, I understand people procrastinate, but really, if you want to get the most out of that live training, do it sooner than later because you will get all of that uh, access to all of that material instantly. You can start studying the strategies and the online material. And I mean, just think about if you had bought the course a week ago and you'd already studied some of that material, 
I'm not saying you should be trading right away. I actually encourage you not to, but CLRB just in one day, it more than doubled from the entry signal. So there's opportunities coming up every day. They're out there. And the sooner you're learning, the sooner you get access to all this stuff. All right. So I'm going to now take some questions. I'm going to close this poll here. And if you're watching this as a video and you want me to send you the, um, the email with, um, the information so you didn't answer the poll you're not on my list just fire me an email I'll put my have my address up in just a second and um, I will make sure that you get the email so there is my contact information there's my email address that's my personal email it only goes to me I'm the only person that answers your questions I don't have an army of people answering questions for me um, I have people that program my website that keep it up and running but all of the um, interaction with my students is done directly by me here is the uh, address for that has more information on the upcoming or on any of the live training. And I'll just show you that page. If you go to a browser, type in stockscores.com slash learn, it'll take you to this page. There's a little video that gives an overview of the education center. There's a video for each course. So if you want to learn how the foundation works, there's a video. How the investor course works, video. Active trader course, video. If you've never purchased it, it'll show you the purchase price here and um, shows you how upgrades work, how mentorship works. Mentorship is something where I train people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not going to be doing that um, for a little while just because the summer is coming and I, uh, I may have a new mentorship program starting in September, but for right now, mentorship is not available. Um, but if you have an interest in it, let me know and I'll put you on a list in case I do offer that again. All right, so all, all kinds of information here on the Learn page, and if you have an interest in the course, definitely check that page out. All right, so where are the markets going from here? Let's do a little bit. Oh, I have just a quick question. Someone's asking me what is the cost to repeat the course. If let's say you took my Active Trader course two years ago, you want to do all this stuff again, it's $195. Um, and I sent out an email about that probably about a week and a half ago. So if you didn't get the email and you are one of my students, um, check in your spam folder or junk folder. It may have landed in there. If you didn't get it, though, email me and I'll send you the, the sign-up information if you would like to do that. <clears throat> so someone, I'll just answer a few questions maybe before I do this market analysis because i got quite a few coming in here. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, so what do we got here? And i got so many questions. I don't want to answer all these. It'll just take too long. And I think some of them I answered... Um, so someone's asked me if they get the plus green and red dots available uh, to active traders in the future. Yes, you do. Would you bother to scan sectors of golds and then drill down? So doing a top-down approach, I actually don't do that. I used to do that, but I find it's more effective to go bottom up. Um, someone's asking what I suggest to broker in Canada. I trade through Desjardins. I'm actually really frustrated with them. I got uh, stopped out on a trade that I should never have been stopped out, and it's about the third time that it's happened. So I'm looking for a new broker, but I haven't found one yet. Um, but uh, the, this problem with these stops getting gunned when the stock doesn't even trade near my price for the stop is frustrating and it's costing me money. So I don't really have anyone that I'm going to recommend today because I'm doing some research on where I might go. Um, so I'm not really sure. Um, how much does TradeStation cost per month with your discount, including data fees in Canadian dollars? So it depends a lot on what the currency exchange is. It's around $300 a month Canadian. Uh, it's like $230. It's, it's $149 for TradeStation plus $59 US for radar screen plus your exchange fees. So it adds up to around $220, $230, and then you convert that to Canadian. Uh, depends on what your credit card company charges you for exchange. Um, so I'm considering taking the course. Wanting to confirm for TradeStation, you provide the indicators as well as a discount at TradeStation. Yes and yes. So my students get a discount on TradeStation. And again, that's really only applicable for Canadians. If you're an American, just open an account with TradeStation because you get it for free. Um, and, and if you're a foreigner outside of North America, um, I think TradeStation will open an account with you. They just don't open accounts for Canadians. There's a goofy law. Uh, so yes, I give you the indicators if you're my active trader student and I give you the salesperson who will give you the $100 a month discount. 
Um, do I have any plans to work with another investment organization? Yeah, possibly, but I don't have anything I can announce today. Um, I subscribe to Stockwatch. Are you familiar with them at all? Yeah, I, um, I used to use Stockwatch maybe 15 years ago. I don't use them anymore. I think they're great if you're kind of a penny stock Canadian trader. They're, I don't know, they haven't really kept up on the, I shouldn't say that because I really don't know. I haven't used it in a long time. I was looking over the shoulder of a friend of mine a two, couple of weeks ago who was using Stockwatch, and to me it looked kind of dated, but whatever. I mean, it may be great. I, I really can't give you a great um, opinion of it because I don't use it. Do I cover option strategies? I cover uh, the basics of options, but I am not an options trader. I'm not a big believer in options. I think that they're crack cocaine for traders, and most people blow up using options. I think if you really take the time to understand options, they're great but most people don't put in the time to understand them. So I'm a little cautious with options. I think that, uh, you know, if you're really into using the leverage of options, I understand it because you really get great performance with the leverage and, and there's a great ways to manage risk with options and different strategies, but it's not my area of exper expertise. Uh, and so I don't really teach that stuff. Okay, uh, am I familiar with BMO Investor Line? I'm really not familiar with any brokers. Again, I haven't looked at them a lot because I'm with this. I've been with the same broker for the last ten or twelve years. So, but I'm getting a little frustrated with some of these things that are happening there. So, I'm going to look at a new broker, but I don't have anyone that I can uh, recommend. Someone's asking if they can get a replay of my webcast. A couple things: all my webcasts are recorded. As long as the recording works, I upload it to YouTube. So this one is being recorded. As far as I can tell, it's working. So I will upload it to YouTube. And as long as you registered for this webinar, and I'm assuming since you're watching it today, you're registered, you will get an email in the next few hours with the link to that um, webinar. If you don't get the we uh, email, then check in your junk folder or spam folder because it should be in there. I, I email it to everyone. Um, but if you don't find it, go to my Stock Scores channel on YouTube. So go to YouTube and do a search for Stock Scores. You'll find my channel. And... Um, you can uh, watch all my videos. I upload, you know, at least one video a week, often more. I've read all you read all my I've read all your books and done the free education on your site. I'm interested in the Active Trader course. Do you think I would need to take the Foundation course? Well, the Foundation course is part of the Active Trader course. So when you take the Active Trader course, you also get the Foundation. You also get the Investor, and you start with the Foundation and work your way through the material. It'll take you you know, maybe eight hours to get through the foundation. And then you start to learn the strategies, which are in the active trader course. And most people don't do every strategy. Even I don't do every strategy. I do only two of my strategies on a regular basis um, as far as active trading goes, because it's just too busy. You can't do them all. So I pick my favorite two based on my schedule, based on um, how the market's behaving. And that's what I do. And I change them. If I'm going to sit at my screen all day long, I'll do different strategies than if I'm only going to trade for the first hour. So all of that um, are things that you have to consider. Okay, so let's uh, do some analysis of the markets. Now, incidentally, let's just go to stock scores here. I do, um, every weekend, I record a video called the Market Minutes. And if you subscribe to the Stock Scores YouTube channel, you'll get a little alert when this video is uploaded. So I'm just going to search for Stock Scores here. And there is a link to my channel. And there you can see um, my Market Minutes video for this weekend. I just recorded it uh, last night. It's been uploaded to YouTube. And you can watch it uh, there. It's free. And this is where I do my analysis of the market every week. So subscribe to the channel. Um, I love to see lots of subscribers being added. I think I've got a couple thousand subscribers right now, but love to have 20,000. So let's tell your friends, get everybody to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Lots of free content on here. What I'm going to do today is some of the analysis that I would do in that video. So let's take a look at the different indexes. Let's start with the S&P 500. And I'll just go through some basic chart analysis for it. I've got to change my chart to a, uh, I'm going to make it an eight-month daily chart. So I'll convert this to daily, make this eight months, just setting my default time frame here. Click on create chart. And there is an eight month chart of the S&P 500. So what's going on in the S&P 500? Well, what's happened is the market had a great rally off of the lows in February. 
it's come up to resistance and it got stuck. And that's really what we expect to have happen. Markets that rally into resistance stall at resistance. And now the question is, are we going to break down below support? We've got support at about 204 on the S&P 500 ETF SPY. If it closes below that, um, I think we're in for some weakness. It's built a falling top. This is actually a pattern called a head and shoulders top pattern. And it actually went through that, uh, what's called the neckline on that pattern on Thursday, but it didn't close below. Another thing that everyone should do is follow me on Twitter because I'll put out little tweets um, during the trading day once in a while. I don't do it a lot, but a couple times a week, I'll put out little comments about different things. So the comment I put out on Thursday morning was, you know, the market's breaking below this critical level. If it closes below that level, you should be pretty nervous about stocks going lower. Now, as it happened, it didn't do that. It bounced back before the close. So the market is still, um, still okay. I think it's dangerous right now. It's showing, you know, a real threat of that downward or that support area, but it hasn't broken down yet. So I would call this a neutral chart. Uh, the sentiment stock score is 60. That's right on the cusp of being between neutral and bullish. So that's my opinion of U.S. stocks. I think you got to be cautious with U.S. stocks right now. Canadian stocks, let's take a look at the Toronto Stock Exchange. So T.XIU. Uh, similar situation, markets rallied into resistance. Let me look at this on a three-year weekly basis, a little longer term. So there you can see real dismal downtrend as oil collapses, commodities in general collapsed. And we had our bounce back break of trend a few months ago. It's been rallying ever since. It's now stuck at some resistance from the uh, highs right here last fall. And we expect it to stall there. It's normal. I would say that this chart looks a little better than the U.S. chart. I think the Canadian stock market looks a little better, but it's also stuck. And so I think you have to be pretty selective in what you buy right now in the Canadian market because it's fighting against that resistance. It's building some optimism in over the last few months. That's good. As long as the upward trend line is intact, that's good. Let's take a look at gold next. GLD is a ETF that represents gold doesn't represent the gold miners. That For that one, I would use GDX uh, for the gold miner stock. So gold broke its downward trend line right uh, there, uh, start of the year. That was positive. It's now built a rising bottom, and then it broke from a rising bottom four weeks ago. So that's a good long-term setup for gold. However, um, it hasn't gone anywhere since. So right now, support for gold is at 115 on the ETF. If we close below that, I'd be pretty nervous about gold. Now, the enemy for gold is a rising U.S. dollar. And so although I am long-term bullish on gold because of this chart pattern, I'm also kind of cautious right now because I see the U.S. dollar, and the symbol for that is UUP, moving up a little bit and threatening to break the downward trend line. Now, it hasn't done so yet. It's just had, you know, three weeks of strength, so hardly the start of a rally yet. It hasn't broken the downward trend. But if we get something like what happened here, where you break the downward trend and then you break higher from a rising bottom and we ultimately had a huge run to the upside on the U.S. dollar, that will crush commodities again. I don't see it yet, but I think it's something to be cautious of. You see the rating, the sentiment stock score on the U.S. dollar right now is 50. That's neutral. So it could get better or worse, depending on how you look at it. It could start to move up more. could start to break some of those downward trend lines from a rising bottom. So just a little bit of caution with the gold uh, area. Now, looking at the gold sector, and again, I like to use GDX as an ETF that represents the miners. It kind of threatened the upward trend line last week. So far, it's bounced back. It's got a little falling top here. That's a worry. So I think if you own gold stocks, be careful. If you see this ETF move uh, and close through $23, I would um, probably take some profit on some of those gold miners, which have done tremendously well. You know, going back to that gold miner, I think they're a gold miner, Claude Resources, I don't even know actually, maybe silver, I don't know, uh, but you know, a stock like this, which has gone up 600% uh, since I first found it uh, two years ago almost, well, a year and a half ago, uh, eventually these things, these bubbles burst, and that's a huge run, there's a lot of uh, miners in this uh, area that have just had a huge run, and I think you just have to be a little bit careful with them. Um, one last chart I'm going to look at is the oil chart. 
I like to use USO as my ETF that looks considers oil. It's a non-leveraged uh, fund that basically is based on uh, oil. I think it's based on West Texas Intermediate, so it's not based on Brent, um, but they tend to move pretty similar. So uh, here you've got a pattern called a rising wedge pattern. It is a bullish pattern until it breaks the upward trend line, and then it becomes a bearish pattern. It's it's um, the the nature of this pattern is that the bottoms are rising quicker than the tops, and that's a sign that buyer interest is the, the buyers are becoming less motivated. That's kind of what this pattern uh, means. So you got to be a little bit careful with that. It's still a bullish pattern because the, the trend is up, but notice that the trend is moving up less quickly. And so there's less enthusiasm in that particular pattern. That means that oil is good, but initiating positions here a little risky. I think the oil market needs a catalyst to really get going. I would actually like it more if it pulled back for a few weeks and then started to go again, because it would kind of recharge buyer interest. It would shake out some of the sellers on the oil stocks, recharge buyer interest, and then maybe allow these stocks to make their next run higher. So I'm optimistic about oil, but I'm cautiously so. Um, and again, that strength in the U.S. dollar, it could hurt oil uh, because as the U.S. dollar goes up, of course, it makes oil more expensive around the world because oil is, tends to be priced in U.S. dollars and that can cause it to pull back. So in the grand scheme of things, oil has stabilized. That's great. But it also stabilized, you know, back in the middle of 2015, uh, right in there, and then it ultimately took another leg lower. So don't think that because we've had strength for a few months that the weakness is over. We had something similar back there in 2015 before it rolled over the next time. Um, but for now, the trend is up, so stick with it. All right, so that is my analysis of a few areas of the market. And again, I do this every week. Watch that YouTube video. It's free to watch. and um, and you can uh, uh, learn something every week from that. A few more questions before I wrap up. Um, do I update my strategies in the Active Trader course from time to time? I do. Um, I sometimes add new strategies. The session that I'm going to do in June, so the one that I'm doing June 4th and then 6th to 9th, I'm going to not really update the rules because the rules haven't changed, but I've got a few new little indicators. Some I'm on, I think, noticed that I had some little plus signs on my one of my charts there. That's uh, something new that I'm using to help me see patterns. So I'll, I'll go through those sort of updates or, or improvements on my strategies at that live session. So if you're one of my students from two years ago, you know, for $195, you're going to have me teach these strategies again and go through some of the improvements that I've made in the last little while. Uh, someone's asking if I have an update on GPH. Um, GPH is a stock that I featured in my weekly newsletter a few weeks ago. And... Um, I featured in my daily newsletter a couple of years ago. Uh, it's nice upward trend. I think I featured it at around 12, 13 cents. It's at 16 cents. Um, I don't really follow fundamentals much, but some friends of mine are, are involved with this company, so I probably follow it a little more closely than most. But, you know, the whole story here is Tesla. Tesla is building the Gigafactory. Batteries need graphite. This company has a huge graphite deposit in Alaska. And I think they're trying to sell it or sell their their product to Tesla. And that's why the stock is going up. Because lithium stocks have done very well. Of course, lithium is required in batteries as well. But, you know, oddly enough, lithium, even though they call them lithium-ion batteries, there's more graphite in a lithium-ion battery than there is lithium. And so I don't know that the market's really caught on to the need for graphite for this huge gigafactory. And that's why... Um, I think GPH has got lots of potential still, but I mean, whatever, you guys do the research on it. The chart, it's getting a little extended because it's gone up quite a bit already, but, you know, the people that I know that, that have huge investment in this company think it's got much more upside, so I won't make much more comment than that. All right, there's my contact information. Oh, a couple, one other question. Uh, does your analysis on the overall market influence your trading decision on individual stocks? i.e. if you think the market is likely to correct, would you be more likely to sell a certain stock earlier than you would have normally? Well, I think when I do my market analysis, it affects my aggressiveness to what I will do. I'll, I'll work harder when the market looks good and I'll kind of get lazy when the market doesn't look good. However, ultimately I base my trades on individual stocks on what's happening with that stock. So 
the only thing is in the when the market's kind of shaky and not that it's shaky right now but it's kind of quiet right now so i will be fussier in that scenario when the market's trending i'll be less fussy because i know i got the market on my side to help push things higher so that's kind of how i look at it um i don't really i wouldn't sell a stock that isn't giving a sell signal simply because the market looks like it's going to roll over I wait for the sell signal on the stock. I wait for the buy signal on the stock. I don't buy stocks because I think the market looks good. So ultimately, it comes down to the stocks. Hopefully, that answers your question. There's my contact information, um, email address. Have any questions, email me there. Follow me on Twitter. That's free. Lots of comments on Twitter. It's at Stock Scores. And there's the YouTube channel. Lots of free content on YouTube. Good way to learn some of the things that uh, I do. As I said, every week I'm uploading at least one video. Um, I'm going to wrap it up there. Have a great weekend. It's a long weekend. I am doing another webinar on Monday. I know Monday's the holiday, but I'm going to do another webinar on Monday and then another one on Thursday. My last webinar for this series will be on Saturday next week. And um, if you have any questions about taking the course, certainly email me. Go check out that Learn page. And uh, I'll be sending an email out next week sometime with a little bit of follow-up information on the upcoming class. But again, don't wait until the 11th hour to register for the course because you kind of do yourself a disservice. The more time you can spend going through the material, the better off you will be for the, uh, particularly for the Saturday class on, on uh, June 4th. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. And we'll hopefully see you Monday night, Thursday night, and next Saturday, same time, same place. Have a great week in the market and trade well.